Um, so, sir, what is your name? Oh, hi. Could you do us a little favour? It's not anything extreme. All you have to do is start the clapping and everyone will follow. And then we're going to bring on the next act. We used to debate at Oxford University. So could you start the clapping, Neil? Well, could you follow us? This is exciting. Who has to sort this out at the end of the night? I don't envy them that one bit. It's like my mouse. Like the moment you take your mouse off the computer, the cable becomes a complete and utter, like, I don't even know. It's like a bit of spaghetti that's, uh, I don't know, like a junction. Um, anyway, I'm not meant to be talking about this. Hello, I'm Ben. Um, now, I'm very lucky. I, I've known what I wanted to do from a very, very young age. Uh, Age five, I did my school nativity play. I was playing shepherd, and um, I came off stage with my stuff cheap, and I went up to my mum and I went, yep, that's what I want to do, mum. And I think for one moment she thought I was gonna say shepherd, and she looked a bit worried about that, and I was like, no, 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 I wanna act, I wanna act, mum. And she looked absolutely terrified at that point. Um, so, so it was, age 12, I was making my RSC debut in London. London glittering, not quite the West End, it was the Barbican Centre, it's near. Um, but London's glittering concrete 60s block, and there I was on stage playing, boy, you needed the toilet. No lines, but I got to stick my hand up in the air, yeah, and look like I needed the toilet. And, and, and so it was, so it was. Age 18, that I was finally ready to start living the dream, and I was... I was going up in the car with my parents to university, finally, to live the dream and study chemistry. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, did a, I did a four year chemistry degree. I, I, I don't know why I did that, but, but chemistry is brilliant. It's brilliant. Science, science is amazing. Like chemistry is so important because it, it, it helps you understand like um, what this is made of, like, you know, like a shoe or you or, or what the universe, what the universe takes on. What it, what it tick, what it makes it tick, I think is what I meant to say. <laughs> what it ticks, I don't know. But, but, I wasn't listening in lectures, I should point that out. But it makes you understand the universe, and, it, and you get to play with Bunsen burners. Oh, oh, you get to play with Bunsen burners, and they're brilliant, they're just they're the best things ever. But it did, it did get me thinking, actually, like, you know, science makes you ask deep, you know, questions that, you know, really go sort of searching meaning of life, what, what was the Big Bang? What was there at the start of the universe? Who invented the Bunsen burner? Um, Robert Bunsen. Robert Bunsen. Yeah. That's a shock to everyone, I can imagine. But it's probably the biggest shock to him because he discovered two elements, ladies and gentlemen. He discovered cesium and rubidium. No one remembers that. No one remembers that. Well, no, they're shocked. Shocked. Not to glance over in surprise that he discovered cesium and rubidium. invented the Bunsen burner. I mean, there's not much chance of that, to be honest, you know. As, as I say, um, I, have, uh, I have given up the chemistry now, and I'm now living the freelance lifestyle. Yeah, I'm an actor sometimes, and uh, a freelancer a lot of the other time, which essentially means uh, living in coffee shops, as far as I can tell. I have asked Royal Mail if I can get my mail re-delivered, but apparently Cafe Nero on Eden Broadway is not a valid address. But okay, we'll work on that, we'll work on that. But yes, yeah, so I spend a lot of time in coffee shops, and, and it, it's got me thinking, it's got me thinking in a scientific view about about high streets and the evolution of high streets, because they're changing, aren't they? They're changing all the time. They're like, like dinosaurs or something. They change. And um, some of them went extinct. And um, apart from sharks, they're dinosaurs, everyone. Fact. Science. Fact. Yeah, yeah. Four years, £9,000 a year, that, that was money was. Yeah, yeah anyway, so, um, so anyway, I spent a lot of time in Cafe Nero, so, and, and I'm, I'm looking at the high street and it's all changing, isn't it? It's changing so fast that everything's becoming a coffee shop. Have you noticed this? Like, Waitrose, Waitrose now give you a free coffee when you go shopping at Waitrose. I don't know if you're a Waitrose member. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a man who likes free coffee from Waitrose. I like it. So Waitrose giving free coffee and it got me thinking, is Starbucks going to start giving um, free shopping when you go? Are you going to, as you leave, they're going to go, there you go, sir. Oh, lovely. Oh, lasagna for two. Brilliant. I'll, I'll put half in the fridge, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to eat it all at once. But, but 
everything's changing. So libraries, libraries are changing as well, and libraries are becoming more and more like coffee shops as well. I've noticed this. Like, so you can get coffee in libraries now, and it, it sort of gets you thinking where it's going to end up because. Um, What's going to happen when you want a donut? Is it going to be filed alphabetically between cream cake and Eccles? Or, um, or, or, or what's going to happen with the, you know that, that gift card thing that, that Cafe Nero do? I do spend too much time in Cafe Nero. <laughs> that, that thing where you, you get nine coffees and you get a tenth. I bet you know about it, don't you? No, no, just waitress, sorry. Cafe Nero is a bit, bit lowbrow. But, but, but Cafe Nero do that gift card, so what, how's it going to work with the library? What are you going to do? going to get nine books out and then get... Oh. <laughs> no, it, does, it doesn't really work. Anyway, thank you very much. You've been a fantastic audience. I've been Ben Galvin. Thank you very much.